Here on the Spooky Celluloid channel, we like to pride ourselves on the variety of Japanese naughty content that's been covered. From naughty Japanese nuns, to naughty Japanese prisoners, to naughty Japanese... Vomit artists? We've done it all, except one subgenre, that being the nurse subgenre. And that's why I'm correcting that right now with Nurse Diary, colon, because it has to be there, Beast Afternoon. <laughs> The film is nothing like the Roger Corman naughty nurse films from the 70s, in fact it shares more DNA with a Isaya Susato movie, which is to say that I'm really excited to talk about it. I would love to tell you that this film's story is linear and simple, especially for the running time, that being 66 minutes, but oh boy is it not. It has love triangles, messed up science experiments, and a lot of naughty dreams. And like any other good piece of erotica, the film starts with two characters committing self-death, that being a nurse and a doctor. We will return to them eventually, but not right now. After the credit sequence, we get to meet our characters. One of them is Raiko, and the other character is her boyfriend. And they're having a fun time in a cemetery. Kind of hurts seeing other people live out your dream, but I'll get over that. And as they climax, something happens and they need to be hospitalized. Raiko's boyfriend, however, is perfectly fine after a couple of hours or days, I don't really know, but Raiko doesn't feel really well. Apparently, she has lived through psychological trauma and she needs to stay at the hospital for treatment. And that's where we are introduced to the interesting thing about this film, the plot device. You see, it's not a regular hospital. A doctor and his mistress, who's also the chairwoman of the hospital, and her husband is gone insane, but again, we'll get to that later, is experimenting with a new device, which can read the dreams of people. It can actually record dreams and project them onto a screen. And that device is a little ring that needs to be inserted into the woman's womb. Not too sure if this film is really scientifically accurate, but supposedly, in this film's universe, women's dreams are transmitted through their vaginas. Which leads us to one of the most creative shots of this film. You're literally inside the woman as you see her getting that ring inserted. <laughs> This video is not getting monetized, so if you're interested in seeing this video uncensored and supporting me, I have a Patreon. <laughs> But they don't just insert the device. In fact, they create this sort of situation with hypnosis where every time the woman hears a bell, she gets all horned up, which will cause her to have some naughty dreams starring the doctor. And the nurse looking at the dreams leads to my favorite shots of the entire film. You see this very Sato-esque vision of a screen showing the dreams while the characters are looking at it, and it's this kind of phobia of technology that is very much present in Sato's filmography. That's kind of the beginning of the film. She has more dreams, some of them include the chairwoman, and then we get to the real plot of this film. <laughs> You see, the nurse looking at the patient's dream used to be in love with the nurse who committed self-death at the beginning. And them committing self-death also led to the director of the hospital going crazy. The only issue is that he's the one who created the dream ring, which the chairwoman and her lover want to present at a New York science fair, not fair, convention, because it's a breakthrough in science. So they need to make the director not crazy for him to tell them what the dream ring is really about and how it can be recreated and how it can make a shit ton of money. Following me yet? <laughs> I was just looking at this, I'm like, how are we gonna get to the end of this plot with only 30 minutes left? That's why the dream nurse utilizes those bell ringing to hypnotize our main character to make her do her bidding. That bidding is committing murder.
There's a lot of these Nikatsu films that you're like, damn, this is just a weird, bizarre, erotic art film, and then it just turns into a revenge film. However, when Raiko is about to murder the doctor and his mistress, the bell just doesn't work anymore. That leads the doctor to figure out what is going on. He goes to see Dream Nurse, and they have a fight. By that I mean they have intercourse. Over Raiko, while she's passed out on sleep medicine. This movie includes all the fetishes, even the foot one. That doesn't stop her dream nurse, however, and she has another tactic. She figures out that to bring back the director to not being insane, she needs to stimulate him by having intercourse with him. Then the chairwoman and the doctor walk in on them having intercourse and she tells them that he needs more stimulation, which leads to the weirdest orgy I think I've seen in a pinku film in a while. At the same time, this movie, like a lot of Nikatsu film, is shot beautifully on film, the lighting, the direction, the cinematography. Incredible, which makes this scene even more bizarre. And kind of unnecessary, because after they're done, she murders the chairwoman and the, and the doctor by hanging them, just like how our characters at the beginning hung themselves. The dream nurse even has an hallucination that Raiko is actually her girlfriend. The nurse from the beginning. It feels like I'm overcomplicating this. Look, I didn't catch everybody's name, this is like an hour long. I don't even think they mention all of their names, they're just people with jobs. This insanity leads to a fire starting, and then Raiko runs away with her boyfriend, and all is good. The end. So, what did I think of Nurse Diary? Beast Afternoon. Well, I really enjoyed this. It's not on the level of a Sato Pinku film, even though Sato is not the only one who's made incredible Pinku film, as I've discussed on my channel multiple times, but he's just the example of great Pinku films. But it's really close to being on that level. The ones I've covered recently were just kind of softcore erotica with not much to it, other than, you know, one of the nun films being incredibly depressing, but that's for another day. And that's what this film doesn't have that a lot of Sato films have. It's not super depressing, it does kind of have a melancholy theme running through it, but it's not as depressing as that, mo uh, that movie, which I think was Nurse uh, Nun's Diaries Confession. Uh, that one was messed up, that one was really good too, but this one is superior to that one. It doesn't have the depression, but it has everything else, the amazing cinematography, the amazing acting, the surprisingly convoluted, convoluted and complex storyline, the characters that you actually like, the ones that are likable, which not a lot of them are, and <laughs> you really want Raiko and her boyfriend to make it out of there alive, which they do and it's kind of a wholesome ending for a Nikatsu Roman porno. I was also shocked at that. If you're a fan of the genre for other reasons than for uh, pleasuring yourself, this is one that you definitely want to check out. So yeah, I recommend it.